Welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna look at the line e4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, of course, and now the move e5. Um, this is the main variation, and now we can play knight e5 as black, put the knight in the center, and the main move for white here is now knight c3, attacking the knight, and now we have the a bit strange looking move e6, protecting the knight, now white takes on d5 and e d5. This center is actually not that weak and we can, uh, we have a double pawn but we can play d6 and d e if necessary or probably even white will take on d6. So white plays d4 and now play will get really really sharp because uh, we play knight c6 developing a knight um, and now white grabs the pawn, weak pawn on d5 by taking on c5 we take back with a bishop, developing a bishop, queen d5, and now we play queen b6. And now the thing is, uh, we are actually uh, in a moment a pawn down, but um, f2 is really weak and can't be protected easily. Queen d2 is really weak because um, you block your own bishop and we castle and attack e5 later, so we will just win the e5 pawn back, and then your queen is just misplaced on d2. So there's a better line for white, um, playing bishop c4 and attacking the f7 pawn. So now we take on f7 with check, king e2 and castle. To protect our f7 pawn, white continue playing rook f1, attacking our bishop and more important for white attacking also later in the game f7. We retreat our bishop to c5. And now knight g5 attacking f7 once again. So f7 is attacked many times. Knight, uh, rook, bishop and queen. And now we have a really, really good move. Um, before this move was discovered, um, black players played knight d4 check here, um, which we will look at later. But for now we will look at a really, really good sacrifice uh, Knight takes e5, protecting f7. And okay, let's look at first what happens if white takes our knight on e5. Queen takes e5, and now we have follow up, really, really strong follow up with d5, freeing our bishop on c8, threatening bishop g4, and of course, threatening the bishop. Uh, and white have, has several options now. Uh, we, let's look first at bishop takes d5. As mentioned, we will play bishop g4 check, um, starting uh, to hunt the white uh, weak king. Okay, white has several options now. At first, we will look at king d3. Now we play the bit strange looking move, rook f e8, attacking the queen, um, letting f7 uh, pawn hanging. Um, but if Actually, bishop takes f7 is here a mistake. We just play king h8, and after bishop takes e8, the rook, um, actually protected, the bishop is actually protected by the queen. Um, white gets mated with rook d8 check. Okay, king e4 is soon mate after queen b4, c4, queen takes c4, queen d4, and queen d4 mate. Um, so, okay, the computer plays something like bishop d7, rook takes e7, queen d4. That just wins the queen and actually ends in mate as well. Um, so, bishop takes e8 is just not playable. Let's look at the move uh, bishop, oh no, bishop d5 and then the queen is just hanging. Um, so, let's have a look at a stronger option here for white. Knight takes f7. And if we take the queen, white has nothing better than repeating moves here with knight h6 check, king f8, knight f7, and king g8. So this is just a draw. Um, so king d3 is not really good for, for white, just leads to equality. So let's look at king e1. Okay, this can't be good after rook a1. Bishop takes f7. Um, or king is in check and our rook is hanging. 
but after king h8 and um, there's nothing better than queen takes e8, uh, rook takes e8, the bishop takes e8, getting the two rooks. Um, but this position is not playable for white. We play h6, get some wolf for our king, knight to uh, e4, queen to e6, hitting both the knight and the bishop, rook f4, protecting at, uh, at least the knight. And if we take the bishop, then our bishop is hanging, but we can play bishop f5, bishop d7, queen takes d7, knight takes c5, our knight, uh, our bishop is hanging, but queen e7 wins it back. And after queen c5, um, black uh, is probably a bit better because white is not developed at all. As you can see, the bishop and the rook still on, still at home. So. Uh, here probably black is at least fine, maybe a bit more. And the white king was also quite weak. So king one not really an option there. Um, okay, let's look at king d2. Then we play rook f8 again. Knight takes f7, queen takes, and here also the perpetual. Um, so let's look at bishop takes f7 and bishop d5. Again, bishop takes e8 is really bad because of rook d8 check. So bishop d5 blocking the d-file. Now we have a fast sequence after bishop e3. King d3 and now we take on g5. Queen takes g5 and now bishop e2 wins to rook on f1. So this line is also good. So as you can see, um, after bishop g4 check, uh, all king moves are not that great for white. So there need to be something else. Let's look at knight f3 blocking um, this check. Then we have rook e8 again. Bishop um, sacrifices himself on f7 again. Because uh, rook takes f7 is not working because our rook on a8 is hanging. But in this position just king takes. And we will win the queen because the knight can't move because of the pin. So okay, this is also not an option. So let's look at bishop f3 blocking the check. Then we again play just rook e8 and a8 and win the queen. So the only really interesting try here is rook f3, but this uh, is also not that great for for white after queen b5 check. White needs to, pull, uh, needs to block that check with c4, but now we play rook a8, and we will uh, pin the queen here, and if white takes our queen, we take um, white's queen and take on the bishop later. So uh, this is not working. So white plays knight e6, a really strange looking move, but um, it blocks at least the pin. Uh, black's queen is still hanging. And after f takes e, taking the queen, e d5, queen takes e8 and rook takes e8, um, is leading to an uh, equal, maybe better position for black, um, because white's pawn structure is really weak, h pawn and f pawn is not, uh, f3 pawn is not are not that great and still uh, white is not developed hook is still on a1 and bishop still on c1 and bishop d4 makes it harder for white to develop because it attacks b2 so this position is completely fine for for black um so yeah bishop d5 really complicated you need to know you actually need to know some lines here but all lines are at least equal for black so let's look at queen takes d5. Now we again play bishop g4 check. That was the uh, idea behind d5. Bishop g4 check. Now black has only one good move, blocking that check with um, the rook. We play rook a d8, attacking the queen. Here again, after some uh, king moves, the king will get mated quickly. Be uh, and 
if the king goes to the default, we play rook eighty eight and pick up the queen. So there's no real rook move. Uh, no real king move. So white plays rook f three. We play rook eighty eight, attacking the queen. Queen e four. We take the rook with check. The king takes back, and now um, we just play this position. Um, the white king is really weak, but we have to be a bit careful. Now is, there's a threat of queen takes h7, so we play g6, queen f4, queen c6 check, and knight e4 and rook d8. And this position is really, really good for black. Um, of course, white has two bishops, but uh, again, not really good development for white. And we are really active. And this king on f3 is really weak, so this position is just good for black. So yeah, the uh, queen takes d5 is also not really working. Unfortunately enough, uh, white doesn't need to take on e5. There's a stronger move. Um, knight takes f7 in this position is really, really good, um, leading to a slightly uh, worse ending, but probably still equal. Uh, we take the knight on f7 because uh, there are huge threats towards our king. Rook takes f7, and now the really important queen e6 move to block uh, this line and trade off pieces. Queen takes e6, d takes e6, rook takes f6, and king takes f8. And Bishop g5, we can see that our pawn on e6 is a bit weak, but with precise play, this is not that horrible. So white plays bishop g5, develops the bishop finally. We play bishop d7, also a developing move, rook, takes, uh, rook f1 check. We play king e8. And now, for example, bishop d3 is not really hitting the h, uh, h7 pawn. So we just play bishop e7, trying to trade off more pieces. If white plays, for example, uh, the computer given line h4, then we just have rook c8 and yeah, white uh, has not really something better than taking on e7 and trading off that bishop and playing king e3. Note that bishop takes h7 is leading to black advantage after bishop e5 check um, because bishop d3 is not really working because of rook c2 check. So probably the best move for white here is playing c4, giving up the c pawn. Um, if white uh, removes the bishop here, then we just block the, uh, the f file by putting our bishop on f6. And we just hold this position. And there are even some games where black won this position. So if white is not precise, um, we can win this game either. So some really complicated lines um, leading to probably equality. I have to admit that I never had this position on the board. And I played many, uh, I played the uh, Vincevich variation and the Sicilian many times. But this uh, QE heavy uh, line occurs on, to uh, on the top boards, uh, on the top Grandmaster games. Um, so this is what they figured is the best. And it's probably the best line, it's considered the main line. But in practice, uh, you don't have that. You have don't have this position that often. So don't be too worried about uh, about all this. And we will gonna look at some other lines in the next videos. Um, if you like the videos, please consider subscribing. And for now, I wish you the best of luck in your turn uh, in your chess games, and see you next video. Bye.